Okay, so I'm going to give a quick update on my Z80 computer project. Uh, it's been a while, and that's because I've been really busy. Um, last time I made a video, this whole thing was running on breadboards. Now it's all soldered together, and I've got a pretty compact form factor for the computer. So a lot has changed. And there have also been some functional upgrades. Um, I'm going to demonstrate some of that. Um, I'll summarize a couple of them really quick. Um, previously, um, I had to read data input and output with an Arduino and then display it on my laptop. Uh, now the Arduino is gone and input and output is fully self-contained. Um, I have a control board right here where I can manually enter a byte and then load it into a register and the CPU reads it and you know executes certain functions based on the byte that I load in. And it also has a number display to display bytes output from the CPU, and I'm just displaying them as decimal numbers. Um, additionally, it's still generating waveforms, but I've seriously upgraded the waveform generator board. It has um, real-time frequency control. It has adjustable gain and filtering for waveforms. Here you can see I've got the scope plugged in, and I'll generate some uh, waveforms in a minute to demonstrate what it can do. Um, first, I'm going to run a couple of the programs I demonstrated previously. Like it just calculates mathematical sequences like a Fibonacci sequence and prime numbers. Um, so to do that, I select the program by entering the program number. So first I'm going to run the Fibonacci sequence. And the switches I'm setting just set the program number. Then when I load the byte in, it'll read that and jump to the program that I want to run. So it'll do a Fibonacci sequence right now. And it stops at 233 because it's doing the biggest number in the sequence that fits in um, in 8 bits. So you can see 233 is the largest number in the Fibonacci sequence that's less than 255. So that's why it stops there. Okay, so now I'll run the prime number program by entering the next code. Actually, first I've sent an interrupt. Now I will jump to that program, and I'll do a sequence of prime numbers. So that'll calculate all prime numbers that are less than 255, so this won't take very long. But you can see it going through the sequence pretty quickly. Okay, so those are um those are really the only two mathematical sequences that I've programmed into this thing. Uh, now I'll demonstrate the uh, the waveform generator. So I'll start out with a sine wave, and so I got to enter the code for the sine wave program. And I can do that. Notice, first of all, right now it has nothing displayed on the scope, but I will clock in the byte for jumping to that program. And so you can see now I'm generating a sine wave. So next I'll demonstrate the frequency control. So what I can do is so first of all, for you notice that um, it generates a sine wave by setting these discrete voltage levels. So for each individual voltage level, I can insert weight states, which will increase the time of each, you know, span at each of those levels, which has the effect of reducing the frequency. So I can enter the weight states by, you know, hitting, by entering a code here and then clocking it in, and that'll add weight states. So I'm gonna clock this in by pushing these two buttons and you'll see the frequency be reduced like that okay so I adjust the horizontal scale really quick okay so and if I hit the next switch I can reduce the frequency again so once again you'll see the frequency go down as I add more weight states so that works really well um, now I can filter this waveform, and it's got a, a really simple low-pass filter, and I will, these switches allow me to connect capacitors to the filter, so it has adjustable capacitance. All right, and so there you can see it's, um, it's already filtering. 
I'm going to adjust this potentiometer to reduce the filtering. So you can see we have the discrete levels again. Now I will increase the filtering by turning the potentiometer. You'll see the waveform smooth out. There we go, that looks pretty good. So now we've got a nice smooth sine wave. Adjust the horizontal scale really quick. And so it also has, so I was turning this potentiometer to adjust the filtering. This one allows me to adjust the gain so I have amplitude control on my waveform generator. So I'll adjust the gain really quick. So I can turn the amplitude down like that. Turn it back up. Yes, yeah, so it has pretty good gain control. And so it has also has the ability to generate different types of waveforms. So not only does it do sine wave, but it can also do uh, square wave, triangle wave, and sawtooth waves. Um, I'll demonstrate, first I'll demonstrate the triangle and sawtooth waves. So let me enter the code for generating those waveforms really quick. So first I need to generate an interrupt here. Now I'll enter the code and you'll see a what new waveform appear. Okay, so that's a sawtooth wave. I'm gonna unfilter really quick by removing the capacitance. There we go. Adjust the horizontal scale, my scope, wrong way. There we go, so we got a sawtooth wave. Um, I'll add some weight states to reduce the frequency really quick. Let's see. Yeah, that should work. So I'll enter that that code to increase the weight states. Right, so we reduced the frequency quite a bit. So that that's a new feature, the ability to change frequency on the fly, and I really like it. Um, so you can see we have the discrete voltage levels because the waveform is unfiltered. Again, I will uh, connect the capacitors here to allow me to add some low pass filtering. The switch is kind of tricky to hit. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna reduce the filtering a little bit by turning the potentiometer, just so you can see how the waveform changes as I reduce filtering. All right, so there it's practically unfiltered. And I'll give it just enough filtering to smooth out that that slope. There we go. That looks pretty good. And of course it rounds rounds the edges of the waveform a little bit on the leading edge because it makes that very sudden transition in voltage. I mean, with just it's just the nature of the filtering. You can't you can't get that perfect vertical ramp. Okay, so now you've seen that waveform. I'll do a triangle wave really quick. And I gotta enter the code for that one. Let's see if I remember which code it is. I think it's this code. First I need to add an interrupt. Well, send an interrupt to stop it. Now I will enter this code and that should generate a triangle wave. The wrong code? Maybe it's the wrong code. Hold on just a second. Let's try that. Okay, that's still the sawtooth wave. Let me try this again. There we go. There's a triangle wave. Right, so that's the other waveform I can generate. Um, see, I've already demonstrated filtering, so I'm not going to waste my time adjusting filtering right now. I'll go ahead and uh, demonstrate the final remaining wave, which is just a square wave. Simplest wave of them all. Send an interrupt, enter the code for the square wave. 
actually I will it's pretty high frequency there I will decrease the frequency by using my frequency control function and adding weight states to the waveform there you go I'll slow it down a little more by adding yet more weight states that's looking pretty good I'll slow it down a little bit more a little lower frequency there we go yeah so the the waveform generator is really capable at this point. It has, you know, multiple waveform types that are selectable. It has real-time frequency control, um, adjustable gain filtering, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so that's most of the capability. Actually, I think that's all of the capability that it has right now. Of course, it has a lot of clock speed um, adjustability. Um, previously, it was the CPU is being timed off of 555 timer IC. Um, now it's switchable. I can either time it off the 555 or I can go to a crystal oscillator. And the crystal oscillator runs at two megahertz, but I have a frequency divider that allows me to reduce the CPU clock frequency um, by, by binary fractions. And the 555 also has a lot of adjustability. So right now I think I have the CPU running Oh, it's running 1 16th of 2 megahertz, which is like 125 kilohertz. So not a super fast clock speed right now. I had to slow it down so that you could see the numbers uh, being displayed at a reasonable pace that was readable. So anyways, um, that's pretty much it for now. I think I've displayed most of the capability of the computer as it is. You've had a good look at it. Um, I really like the form factor. It's nice and compact and everything's pretty neat. Much better than the huge mess of wires I had previously on the breadboards. And I'm currently planning some other applications for it right now, which I won't really get into because I want to, well, I want to get them working first before I, you know, spoil any surprises. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.